What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca. Today's video is going to be a recipe video. Um, we have my husband's birthday party tomorrow and we have some nieces and nephews coming so I thought making cake pops would be a nice little treat for them. So um, I will link the recipe that I use. I do tweak it a little bit um, but very simple and nice fun little treat for the kids. So make sure that you're subscribed and ring the bell so you get notified when I upload and we can get started with the video. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over what you need. Um, you need a cake mix. I just got the Betty Crocker um, chocolate, because my husband loves chocolate. Um, and you need all the ingredients on the back of the cake mix. So you're basically just gonna make the cake. So I have eggs, I have one fourth cup of water, and then we're gonna need one third cup of vegetable oil. And then for the chocolate coating, you're gonna need chocolate. I just got the melting wafers. I got the white chocolate, because I wanted to do the chocolate cake and then the white frosting, or the white chocolate over top. Um, and then you're also gonna need a tub of actual frosting. I got milk chocolate, um, the Pillsbury kind, chocolate on chocolate, so delicious. Um, and then you're gonna need a cookie sheet with parchment paper on it. So I have that, and then um, a mixing bowl, spatula, and um, a handheld mixer. So we are gonna make this cake. Okay, you're supposed to preheat the oven to 350, so I have that going. You might be hearing that in the background. Um, I cut open cake mix. Already smells delicious, it's not even made yet. So I just use the Betty Crocker. I'll just set that up there. And then we're going to need one and one fourth cup of water. So I'm gonna dump that in. And then we're gonna need one third cup oil. fresh eggs. Mm. Okay, so you're also going to need a 13 by 9 pan. I'm going to spray it with some cooking spray so the cake doesn't stick. Put the corners. Okay. And then we're going to get the dough. Oh, it smells amazing. Pretty good. Make sure we're kind of evened out. Okay, so we're baking at 350 
It says 30 to 35 minutes. I always like to go under the time and check it. So I'm gonna do 30. Then I'll come back when it's done and see if it needs five more minutes. Okay, so we're back. The cake is all done. Um, I just pulled it out probably 10 minutes ago, so it's still warm. Um, the recipe says to cut it in squares to kind of just get it out of the pan a little easier. Hoping this bowl is big enough, we will see. So I'm gonna just, um, I did only put it in for 30 minutes. It was done after that, so I didn't have to do additional time. Grease the pan real nice so it comes out really easy. And we're just gonna plop it in here, kind of chop it up a little bit as I put it in there. Just like this. So we'll just start here. Um, I'll grab another bowl in a minute for the rest of this. Um, so okay, so taking half of the frosting because I ran out of bowl room. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave half of that in there for this half of the cake. Work way much easier. So I grab that. I'm just gonna scrape this. And then we're just gonna mix the frosting and the cake together. It's nice when it's really warm because the frosting kind of just melts in there. Okay, so I caved and I got a bigger bowl, put it all in there, put all the frosting in. We're just making it work as we go here, I guess. So I'm just gonna continue to stir this up, make sure that all the cake pieces are broken up really well and that the frosting is um, dispersed throughout, so it's all mixing nicely. It starts to get much more like gooey. That's great, that's what we want. So once this is all stirred, we're gonna put um, saran wrap over it, or like cling wrap, and then we're gonna put it in the fridge. It says for two hours. Um, I just want it to be really cool and kind of like a cookie dough consistency so that way I, it's easier to dip in the chocolate. So we are going to, this is what you want it to look like, nice and gooey, yummy. I'm going to cover this and put it in the fridge for two hours and we'll be back to do the rest. So we have refrigerated the batter, you want it to look like this, I've already made some. Um, so it's like a thicker cookie consistency. Um, and I just use this one and a half tablespoon scooper, it works amazing. Um, and then I have my cookie shoot with parchment paper on it. And then I tried a first batch with that white chocolate that I had and the chocolate doesn't melt or didn't melt as well as I wanted it to. So I just got Baker's uh, dipping chocolate, just the chocolate kind, not the white chocolate, um, and it works way better. I don't know if it's just because it's a different brand or what, but way better than the white chocolate that I originally used. Um, so yeah, what you do is you just fill up your scoop. You could either put it in your hand and roll them, but I just like to put them right on the cookie sheet like that. That way they're little cake treats instead of like packs. I usually don't put the stick in them um, so that people can hold them. I usually just use them like this and then, um, yeah, a little less work. You could do the sticks, um, but yeah, totally up to you. So I just kind of do like an inch apart and they'll look like that. So I think what I'm going to do with the chocolate is I think I'm just going to drizzle it over the top not fully dunk them in. Um, I just like that better. It's just, you could do either way though. So like I said, I will link the um, recipe for this that I kind of go off of. I change it a little bit. This is the second batch I made. Like I said, the first dipping chocolate didn't really turn out how I wanted it to. So I thought I'd make another batch. These will be gone very soon. Um, my family loves them. But yeah, so I'm just gonna finish scooping this up and putting them on the cookie sheet like that. 
and then um, you can either put them back in the fridge for 10-15 minutes um, but this is really cold it's been in the fridge for probably a day now um, so I probably will not put them back in the fridge I'll just melt my chocolate and then drizzle over with a spoon but I will um, show you guys that in a minute so they are all on the cookie sheet like that and I just reheated the dipping chocolate. This is really easy. You just take the lids off and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then mix it together to um, melt the rest of it. You don't want to over microwave it because then it will um, like char kind of. It'll just ruin the chocolate. So it's all mixed and liquidy and I think I'm just gonna drizzle it over and see how it turns out. We'll just wing it I guess. So One thing about these is they don't have to like look the same. They're just yummy, easy, and just it's chocolate, so more chocolate the better, right? So far, I'll show you the final um, look of them, and then I'll put th this batch, and then I'll put the white chocolate batch. Just so you can kind of see both of them. I love this treat. It's super easy. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys try this recipe or if you have any other really good recipes. For little treats like this that you want me to try let me know in the comments below so this is what they look like all done kind of just did a little dollop of chocolate on the top and um, you could also add like sprinkles if you wanted to um, or like little pearls i've done that before any cake topping you want to put on it you could do that but yeah these are what they look like when they're all done and i'm going to put them in the fridge for a few minutes just so the chocolate on top kind of hardens and then they're ready to eat.